Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I'm going for a winter themed layout. I will be working on my loose papers and this is an art journal, I got a lot of questions about that from the previous video. This is an art journal from a previous release by Art My Marlene. I don't think it is uh, available anymore. However, if you want to have an idea on what pages I'm working on, these are 5 by 7 inches and they are thick watercolor paper. So I'm going to start working on my background and I want to have some uh, texture back there. That's why I grabbed one of my stencils. This is an old stencil by Tim Holtz with lots of stars and I'm going over it in some areas using my Versa marking. The technique that I'm going for is embossed resist since I'm planning to use my distress oxides over the paper to add some color and uh, the embossing powder is going to resist the paint and these designs will stay white and vibrant. Since I'm going for a winter themed layout today, instead of using that stencil with the stars, you can go with a stencil that has lots of snowflakes. I applied on top white embossing powder, this is a fine one that picks all the little details and I'm going to heat set it. Since I'm working white on white, I know it is super hard for you to see the texture and what's going on on the page. However, the design is going to magically appear once I apply my oxides on top. I just went over the paper with uh, two sprays. These are tumbled glass and iced spruce. It's a lovely combination for winter. And out of all the times that my camera had to stop working, it was the time that I was applying the sprays. But I didn't do anything fancy here, just sprayed a couple of times with both those sprays. And now I'm using my heat gun to make sure that this is completely dry. Now the embossing powder does resist the ink, so there are some uh, areas that are not going to dry. And I'm just wiping them off with a paper towel. I'm also going to add some water splashes with a brush. These are going to react with the ink and they are going to give a ghost effect. I'm also adding uh, splashes with the two uh, colors of sprays that I used for the background. So that's ice spruce. And then I will do a few with tumbled glass. Today's page is really easy to put together. If you are a beginner, you can easily follow the steps. And if you are a card maker, you can easily turn this into a card. Now I'm going to do some more stenciling, this time I'm going to bring a stencil that has lots of textures. It's a lovely stencil that I used before by Studio Light and I'm going to add some uh, interest at the background. The color I'm using is Ice Spruce, so again I'm using the same color that I have on my background, but of course in a different medium, in a different form, so that's Distress Ink. If you notice, I'm staying mainly at the edges and I'm going to bring in one of those circles as well just to add some extra interest there. I like to have visual texture in the background, but at the same time, I like to keep everything quite subtle. And uh, I think I achieved that on this page as well. And I always like to somehow frame my layout. I usually do that by inking up the edges with a darker color. So again, I'm going with iced spruce, slightly darker than the bluish edges, and I don't want to bring any black here. I like all those cool winter colors at my background. Now, I picked one archival ink that is um, slightly darker than the blue at the background, and I'm doing some stamping with a text stamp. The archival ink color that I'm using is cornflower blue. But keep in mind that just like always, I do leave a list of all the products that I use on my projects down below in the description area, as well as on my blog. For my focal point, I'm going with a ready-made one. And I will use images from this DIY blog by Studio Light. This is a lovely paper pad that gives you lots of pattern papers, but also many images that you don't have to fuzzy cut. All you have to do is uh, just to pop them out. They are the same idea as the DIY blocks by Art by Marlene that we are also familiar with, since after all they are from the same company. So I decided to go with the little deer for my focal point and I don't want him to be alone, so I'm going to give him a friend. That's why I popped out a little bird as well. 
Some of the images do have a little bit of a white border all around. I don't want to have that, so I'm just going to do some cleanup here. Now I'm placing them on top of the background, see how they look, and I will grab the paper pad again, browse through the pages and see if I can find any more elements to dress it up. And I decided to go with that tree. This paper pad also has a big polar bear, which would also make a great focal point for another winter page, as well as a few penguins that are adorable. Anyway, I am going to tear a piece of white paper from this scrap piece of paper. This is going to provide kind of a ground for my little deer. I want to create a cluster on the right side of the page and if you have seen my previous video where I shared my recipe, that's exactly what I'm doing today. This is a little banner, again I just popped it out of the paper pad and I'm just going to stick everything down, layering all those elements that I have. To dress it up a little bit, I'm also bringing in a die set that has lots of branches. I am going to use a few of them to cut out some branches out of uh, white, out of vellum, out of uh, uh, green. I did use the green from the pattern paper. I didn't know exactly which ones I'm going to use for this page, so I had to cut out a few to have some options. Finally, I think I settled only for the vellum and the white ones, since they did give a great contrast against the blue background. Since I'm not working inside the book and these are pages, loose pages that are going inside the binder, I can be more dimensional with my creations and that's why I did add a foam tape behind one of those paper strips. I'm not sticking the leaves and branches flat on the page. They will be squashed when I close the book, however, they will still have some movement when you open the art journal on this page. So I'm going to bring in this stamp set and I will stamp one of those uh, stamps that has a snowflake on top. Again thinking of all the elements that I used to layer on top of this little cluster that I'm creating. Another way to go would be to die cut an actual snowflake and stick it there as well. I did stamp that with um, iced spruce. Again, I'm staying on the same color theme as I did from the beginning. I'm going to use a little uh, circle die to cut it out and I will stick it in place. On the branch that looks like it has berries on top, I'm going to add a few dots of glue and then stick on top some white gems. No one says that you cannot have gems on an art journal. I also like to add a quote on all of my art journals, that's why I decided to go with these Christmas stickers by Tim Holtz. This has uh, silver or gold letters on top and they are really shiny. I'm going to pick a phrase and cut out only the part that says Winter Wonderland. This is a sticker pack that I have from uh, last year or maybe from uh, even more years, I can't really remember. If it is still available, I will make sure to link it down below. And finally, it's time for the finishing touches. I'm using my white gel pen and adding some highlights on the cutouts. And of course, I will add some white splashes, making sure that they are not going to fall on top of their heads. I am using a paint spray here. This is... Uh, by Alta New, but you can do the same thing with uh, gesso or with white paint. So that's it, I'm super happy with the outcome, I'm going to call it done and place it back into my art journal. At the end of the video you will be able to see some close-up photos where you can see the details better. Down below in the description area you will find links to all the products that I used. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired and if you did, don't forget to press the like button. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.